Beyond Technical, Competitive Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Beyond Technical. Today, I thought we could go back to the old teaching format of the show, and I could cover something that I think is really, really important to learn, and most people don't seem to know about, even though it's actually one of the simplest concepts in the game. And uh, it's basically punishes, except it's more like capitalizing on opportunities. So when I watch bad or lower tier players play, the biggest thing that I see them do is these horrifically unsafe setups. They, they do all these attacks that are super, super easy to punish, and people don't really seem to be taking full advantage of that or realizing how often it's actually happening. So what I thought we could do today is I, I just down, I recorded a couple matches that I just played, and I figured through those matches I would look for those chances to punish these opportunities, and then we could kind of take, the, take a video, analyze it a little bit, and talk about uh, how that works in a match. So let's jump over to the match. It's uh, Rose versus T-Hawk. Um, I am playing the Rose, the T-Hawk is, is my enemy. Um, what I'm going to talk about throughout the match is basically these chances to just get free damage that T-Hawk keeps handing me. Um, I do it as well. Uh, it's it's something, you know, that everyone's still going to mess up for the most part. But um, let's just start this. Okay, so he's got me in a crumple. We're kind of going back and forth. Nothing too fancy. I land a jump in. Nothing too crazy. Okay, so here, there's that, that kick. Very easy to punish with a rose sweep. So there you go. Free damage, basically. He did a standing heavy kick, and I opened up and just took my free damage from it. Um, now that's not the end of the world, it's one little hit throughout a match, but there's one thing coming up that really just is, I guess, the king of, of free damage. So, the reason I took Ultra 1 on Rose was for this exactly right there. There's his Condor Dive. If you Condor Dive Rose and she has an Ultra 1, you Ultra 1 and you get a gigantic free punish. So anytime she has Ultra 1, if you're playing a decent player who has a reaction time, basically, if you're thinking about it throughout the match, hey, I should probably not do this, or I, if he does this, here's how I'm going to counter, you're really not going to miss it. So here he does his Condor, uh, Condor Dive. Immediately I illusion spark and basically just hands me a free round. I mean there was still a lot of health I had to chip off, but instead I don't even have to worry about it. One simple attack, boom, tons of damage. So I know this is a concept that most people have probably thought about or heard before, but just watch through it a match how many times this stuff actually happens. Um, you can see him jumping over and over as well. Jumping is pretty unsafe. I should probably be punishing that a little better. I'm still learning the rose, so I'm not great at it. Um, and he takes my fireball because he's already in the air and just gives T-Hawk a free shot. Um, and again, there's a bunch of back and forth. Um, but there, look at that. Another dive right into an illusion spark. So <laughs> the biggest thing I guess I'm trying to find out here is just how easy it is to get all this free damage every single time. Now what are the odds that I'm going to keep winning if he keeps handing me free damage like this? Um, it's just massive. So. When you're playing, oh, here comes the leg. When you're playing, watch for these opportunities. Try to think about your matchups and think, okay, so T-Hawk, he's got a bunch of stuff that makes him really unsafe. So why don't I take Ultra 1 and, uh, and actually just take that free damage output every time? Because most chances are most players are going to throw you at least one free punish throughout the round. Ultra 1 comes out in 10 frames now in rows, which makes it very easy to punish anything that has a slow recovery. Adon versus Balrog in this kind of machine new level thing. Okay, so let's just look at some of the ch chances I get in this match. So, clearly as you're playing Street Fighter, you're not just going to be able to punish every single thing. I mean, some bad players might give you that chance. Most players are going to be, I guess, doing well enough that uh, you're not going to get all these free, free, free punishes. But, it doesn't mean that the opportunities aren't still there significantly more often than you're aware. So, as you can see now, I've used Turnaround Punch twice to punish these Jaguar kicks. I've been prepping it, and luckily the timing's actually pretty specific for that, so it's kind of hard to punish, but uh, I don't know, I've played a lot of Balrog, so it's getting a little easier to do that kind of stuff. Alright, so he wakes up with an uppercut, which gives me, which should have given me the punish opportunity, but instead I was I was attacking. So that's, that's a risk he takes. He gets a little bit of damage payoff. It's a really shitty risk, because if I do block it, I get a massive punish. And here he comes trying to jump in on me, so I just take an easy anti-air and follow it up with another sweep. He's just jumping and handing me free hits. Just being patient is completely paying off for me here. Alright, so I'm using my meter to get out of these Adon mix-ups, um, and there I use a headbutt to get out of the mix-ups. Um, 
and I'm dash punching way too much. I'm making tons and tons of mistakes, but every time I play patiently, I start getting rewarded for it. As you can see, when I'm being the aggressor, I'm getting hammered. But there you go, Rising Jaguar, and he hands me a free punish, which I unfortunately drop, but there it is, look at that. Then these are 2,000 player point players, which currently in Ultra is actually pretty high. Um, the, I'm not sure if you can punish the EX uh, dive kick there of Adon's, but look, he's gonna like just jump and basically just toss me a bunch of free opportunities uh, for damage. Alright, so he backs off a little bit and we take our time. Now here's the question of, should I be playing aggressive, should I be playing defensive? Now I'm, I'm actually lower on health, so he can wait me out. But, there's no reason to go immediately, I still have 45 seconds and not a lot of health to do. Luckily I get a jump in, I find an opening, and I manage to knock him down with this ultra, which puts him, or puts him in the corner, which is, you know, clearly the greatest place for Balrog to be. And then I take a couple pokes, but I just kind of wait it out. Now, those I should have been punishing, uh, unfortunately I don't, which ends up giving him an opportunity, but he actually does do something that's punishable twice in a row. Most special moves in Street Fighter, for those of you who are, are unaware, are punishable if they are if they land close to you. Basically jabs and stuff usually come out in about 3 frames, and most abilities have 4 or more frames of recovery. Which means that maybe you can only get off a jab, but every character has something they can do from a jab. Jab, jab is usually kind of the opener to most characters have some sort of combo potential from there. Alright, keeping the pressure on, doing a stupid sweep. But he keeps standing up at sweep range, and he's not folk stacking too much, so... And there you go, see he's been so aggressive in the beginning that I've been using a lot of these EX punches on Wake Up, which he just hands me a massive combo for. Um, landing an overhead, a combo into an ultra, and that's just big damage. opens himself up again, and I am not linking these sweeps, by the way. I am messing that up every single time, and he's still getting knocked down hit by it. Make sure that once you, once someone gets you into a combo and you're pushed back, you're holding back down back on the stick, because that's just unnecessary free damage. Alright, so that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. It's kind of a quick one, I suppose, but I thought it would be really useful just to take a look at a couple of matches and show off like just how many times people do things that are horrendously unsafe and easily punished. Uh, I was not perfect on punishing these, but if you watch some of the really high tier players play, you, they almost never do a lot of these unsafe abilities or combos because they just don't want to give the free damage away. Anytime you do something unsafe, you can get punished for it. Even stuff like Balrog's dash punch on certain characters, that's unsafe. So you need to kind of figure out when you're making these mistakes, try and get these habits out of your playstyle, but more importantly, start capitalizing on it when other players do it to you. Almost every single matchup I'm in, somebody does something that's horrendously unsafe and easily punished. The problem is most players don't know how to punish it. Whatever character you play, sit down in training mode for like two minutes and do this. It'll really help level up your game. Start with a jab and figure out how to combo from there. That basically lets you punish almost everything. So even like the really quick Shoryukens that are really hard to punish, you know, you want to use your heavy punch for your punish because it's the biggest damage, but it doesn't work. It comes out really, really slowly. So it only works as a, a punish for things that are horrendously unsafe. The stuff that goes off really quickly, you can punish it with jabs. Figure out your best jab combo. Uh, for example, I didn't know Roses like half an hour ago. So I sat down in training mode and I tested it out. And a nice easy one is just light punch, light punch, cancel into soul spiral. Now I know a way to do about 130 or 140 damage based off of any single time I land a jab. That is a really nice punish to know. If you can get efficient at doing that and you do it all the time, you're really going to see your gameplay go up a lot. Before we end the video today, I want to give a, a bit of a shout out to uh, the fans of Beyond Technical, you guys. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, if uh, you do watch all my videos, that I actually, I read every single comment I get. I just really, really wanted to say I appreciate it, guys. It's amazing the kind of feedback I get, The uh, those of you who let me know that it was helpful, and that I'm not just wasting my time sitting here trying to make all these videos. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that even though I don't respond to every single comment, I definitely read through every single thing that I get, and I will continue doing that no matter how big or how long I, or how big the channel gets or how long I keep doing this. So I just want to say thank you, guys. I hope uh, this is kind of a bit of helpful advice. I know that I was getting frustrated earlier today and I realized that I was I was just not doing this properly. It was a, it's a, 
a concept of the game I understand pretty well, but I just was in like a bad mood or something and I wasn't playing very well. And the biggest thing I wasn't doing is I wasn't taking advantage of these punish opportunities. So make sure that you just watch for these open gaps that players leave you and take those advantages. It's free damage, it's an easy way to win a round because even if you're closely skilled, if you can just take advantage of more punishes than them, your skill gap is now actually kind of pulling away. That's what skill is, taking the opportunities when you can see them. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to, wherever the button is, subscribe and uh, follow me on Technical if you enjoy this kind of content. I have a lot of other gaming stuff coming out, some Let's Plays and things like that that I just need to render and then post online, so I'm gonna keep those coming. I'm gonna keep the Street Fighter videos coming because you guys do definitely tend to like those. And uh, I'm really just having a lot of fun with Ultra and hoping that uh, everybody else can keep leveling up their game as we go. I know I need a lot of practice. I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. So uh, don't give up, keep at it guys. By the way, just for anybody who's curious, Ultra is a piece of crap so far in terms of netcode. The I mentioned it in the previous video, but it is horrible. I literally am struggling just to get into games. So uh, we're gonna probably, we might I might not be super consistent with the, the content until Capcom gets that fix put out. I'm trying to find ways to get into matches, but it's getting really hard. Some nights I literally just cannot play a single game. It won't let me in. Um, the the netcode issue, for those of you who are wondering, is actually, Capcom is trying to fix it. They are going to be releasing a beta mode that you can opt into on Steam if you want to help them test the netcode, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, feel free to do that. I don't think it's gone live yet, but they said it's coming up soon. So uh, hopefully we can get a fix on that real soon and get some Street Fighter going down. More news if you're still watching and you want that. Um, I found a tournament I'm going to try to go to. I'm not entirely sure if I'm free, but I just thought I would tell you guys a little bit about the Korean Street Fighter scene, I suppose. So I've made a couple of friends online uh, that uh, are pretty decent in English, so that's nice for me. And um, I was asking them about what kind of local tournaments there were in Seoul. And they told me, or one of my friends told me, that there is a tournament coming up which is basically a Razer Capcom Invitational where you can go and register online and then go to the tournament. The thing I thought was really cool and totally worth a mention is that uh, for me, I'm used to these tournaments in Canada where it's maybe like $30 just to enter for a single game. Uh, my ex-girlfriend came one time, she had to pay $15 just to watch us play. Uh, like it was pretty expensive. And the tournaments were okay, but they're really cramped and not very comfortable, all yada, yada, yada. So the one I'm, I'm found online is uh, basically it's sponsored by Razer. And so the one thing I thought was really cool they do is they basically have like tournament sticks. So my stick that I have here is a PlayStation 3 and PC stick, but it will not work on an Xbox. This tournament that I want to go to is on Xbox, and unfortunately I didn't ship my Xbox stick here too. So I thought I was completely out of luck, but I found out that they actually offer like rental sticks basically. You can go and just they give you a stick, which I thought was pretty cool. On top of that, the tournament is totally free. No entry fee at all. Uh, it seems to be kind of a common thing in Asia with esports. A lot of things are completely free here. Uh, I've been working at the, the GOM studio and they put on the, like, the big StarCraft matches in our, our big studio. And that's totally free too. So if you're ever looking for a vacation or you're interested in this kind of stuff, Asia is pretty cool because a lot of these tournaments are actually entirely free. There's no cost to enter them or anything like that. On top of that, this tournament has free beer. So not only is it totally free to attend, but they're also handing out free beer, which I think is a pretty cool concept for a tournament. So I'm gonna see if I can't get some footage of that and check it out. I've been told a lot of the Japanese players and everything come over for that. So it should be a, a little bit of an interesting look behind the scenes of the Asian scene uh, over in Korea. So we'll see what I can get for you guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and follow on Facebook and Twitter and all those fun things. I'm actually making a solid effort to be posting more stuff on Twitter. So. Catch you guys next time. I hope it helped out somebody and uh, keep practicing, guys. I'll see you soon.